Spanish world so far has been pretty exciting. A long sandy beach. So getting a couple little projects done. Saturday, Sunday, the wind's gonna be quite strong, so we're gonna stick here. And we're drilling some coconut to have some rum and coconut. We picked a really good anchorage for this storm. The main problem is the fact that I can actually turn over the engine by hand. We're losing all our compression. So we're just leaving Spanish walls behind. After backpacking, we decided to see the world by sailboat. We sailed from the Great Lakes of Canada and made it to the Bahamas where the unexpected happened. We're still not able to start the engine. And we're gonna have a feast! We got a dolphin fish! Let's go! <laughs> There's so many big coconuts here, but they're so high up and I don't think people would appreciate it if I took them. But they're huge, they're like bigger than my head. There's a little bit in there. Spanish world so far has been pretty exciting. It's so cute. There's so many colorful houses all over the place. And the island isn't quite that big, so we just finished walking all the way around it. And there's pretty much everything you need from grocery stores, all mart kind of store that has everything, dental, bunch of different mechanics kind of places. But they don't have any shear pins, so that's a bit of a bummer, but we'll keep on going with the nail. I just found a pomegranate. I didn't realize they grew in these tiny little shrubs. But that's not what it is. got offered a lift by two golf carts but we're in for a walk Well, we just came from Jason's shop. He does starter and alternator repair here in Spanish Wells. And uh, it was really informative. We talked to him a bunch, told, explained the issues we've been having. And I think we've kind of come to the conclusion that most likely, I mean, the batteries are uh, kind of on their way out, but I believe that the starter and batteries are not the main issue or the main culprit to our problem. So I think we're going to look more into the mechanical side of the engine and try to figure out what is causing potentially a lot lack of compression or potentially even um, not proper fuel delivery. Maybe our injectors are clogged or something. Um, so we're going to look into that more so before we potentially bring our starter here to have it looked at because he doesn't seem to think that the starter would be the issue since it is cranking from what we can tell around the same speed, maybe a little slower. Um, but on another note, he also gave us a couple of resistors uh, for free, which was really nice of him. <laughs> and uh, essentially these are going to add up to around a thousand ohms, which will give us uh, the ability to add a little bit more uh, strength to our compressor. Because you, if you hook these up on the thermostat side of the fridge, they will give you, uh, the fridge will work harder essentially. So it'll work harder for a longer period, or for a shorter period of time instead of working putting less amps, so let's say four amps without these, 
uh, comparing to like nine amps with these and that will make our fridge work for longer or shorter period of time. Um, so when we have a lot of sun, we're hoping to hook these up and have them running through so that we can t make use of our charging through our solar. Now let's go grab some food. The ocean side of the Spanish Wells is beautiful. It's that long sandy beach and it looks like there's a sandbar that you can walk at at low tide but I see the sand over there but it's getting deeper and deeper as we're going over so I don't know if we'll walk all the way there. don't want to get caught at high tide. We decided to try these breakers out. They're pretty neat little things. You open them by pushing the button and you flick them down uh, by pushing that. And they're supposed to be rated for 30 amps and they're supposed to be waterproof because of these little connections. But it turns out that these are kind of crap. When, you're, when you hook them up to solar and you've got just under between 15 and, well even 10, even 10 amps uh, going through it, you end up overheating the thing, even though it's rated for 30 amps, these uh, terminals get really hot and it seems like it fails. I, I thought maybe the breaker was just acting funny because if you tap this just gently, it would actually um, turn off the connection. But even without touching it at all, it seems like it was turning off my connection to the battery bank, which means our solar charge controller wasn't getting, wasn't connected to the batteries and it was only connected to the solar which is really bad for the charge controller and anyway these are like less than 15 bucks on amazon so i guess sometimes it pays to get better equipment because these are completely garbage and we're out you know 30 bucks for two of these because they're really not working at all so um and it's funny because the ratings or the reviews actually were quite decent there was a few bad reviews on it but most of them were good but I think a lot of that comes from people just putting it together and saying, hey, it works, you know, because these worked for the first you know, month we've had them or a little over, but now they're consistently disconnecting when they're not supposed to be disconnecting. And they don't trip, they don't do this, which would be it tripping. They stay open or they stay closed and they just disconnect from, I guess, loss of voltage in, in, inside the entire thing. And you sh these connections get extremely hot. So we're back to our original breaker that we had to do some testing to make sure that this is actually the problem, but I'm almost 100% sure this is the issue. So stay away from these little guys. Yum, yum. What'd you got there? What'd you make us? I made us some nice breakfast wrap with my own special sriracha garlic cream cheese spread. So good. Spicy garlicky, perfect. It's really hot today. It's like, gosh, it's gonna be close to 30 degrees in the sun. So we're doing some editing, trying to use the sun power and doing some sewing, fixing up Corey's probably 15 year old sandals right now. So getting a couple little projects done. What's the rest of the game plan for today? Well, if we manage to finish the edit, we might go back to Buddha's uh, snack bar grill thing and use their Wi-Fi over there to upload the video. Then probably get two more jugs of water. And I saw a big boat come in, so I've got a feeling there's eggs in town, so I might go back in town. The egg boat came in? The egg boat came in, that's what I you, think. That's what you're calling it, eh? I think, anyways, we'll see. And I washed my hair this morning. It's soft. It's not salty. So how many more days are we hanging out in Spanish Wells? Um, okay, what are we today? Thursday. Thursday. So tomorrow the wind's starting to pick up a little bit. And Saturday, Sunday, the wind's going to be quite strong. So we're going to stick here because I'll be coming from the north. 
which we're super protected from and there's really good holding here and then I believe Monday is a little windy so I think Tuesday we'll try to make it on the little cut across North Eleuthera and go to the other side so a couple more days here Good. Well, we finished the video, but we didn't get a chance to make it into town. Spent too much time doing the video. And uh, so maybe tomorrow morning we'll make it into town. But we're going to upload the video with data instead since we replenished our BTC plan. Another 15 gigs of data for this month. And we're drilling some coconut to have some rum and coconut. <laughs> wow, that's a rum with lily coconut water. Cheers. Cheers. Yum yum. So what's happening tonight? Um, well, we got a big storm coming in from the north, hopefully, because that will be the most protected spot. And right now we're just enjoying a bit of a sunset while um, the food is cooling off. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We're just waiting out the weather so that we can head further south down Eleuthera. Seems like we picked a really good anchorage for this storm. It's pretty windy, but there's no waves because we're all protected by Spanish Wells and Russell's Island. Yes! Yesterday night was quite uh, uneventful, but we did see tons of, tons, tons of bioluminescence in the water. It was so cool. Alright, so I got these two nuts removed from the valve cover. Now I'm going to remove it and see if I can see anything that's causing some issues here. Luckily it's not seized on too tight by the looks of it. It's a lot of oil. Just watching the pit, the valves go up and down. Just trying to see if they're doing what I'd expect them to do. Well, we just checked the valve clearances. It was a little tricky to figure out where to put the little feeler gauge. It turns out I was trying to shove it in underneath the little spacer on top of the springs, and it's supposed to go on top of that. So it seems like the clearances are actually pretty close. They're not too far off. But the main problem is the fact that I can actually turn over the engine by hand without, essentially without putting the decompression levers on. So I shouldn't be able to turn it with this hand crank with the engine fully compressed. It should be incredibly difficult and it's not right now. So I have a feeling that's we're losing all our compression. And you can kind of hear, if you listen closely, when I turn over the engine, on the front cylinder, the air escaping somewhere. So it's either escaping through the valve or the head gasket. But anyway, something is happening to all our compression. So really, I think we're motorless until we get back to the States, because unfortunately parts take six to eight weeks to get here, and they don't seem to stock them anywhere, at least not the parts I need, like the head gasket. So we're kind of stuck right now. We are going to have to deal without an engine for the time being, like we have been. And uh, hopefully we'll get the parts shipped for when we arrive in the States and get it all dealt with. 
ideally find a place um, that can re-machine our head if we need to do that or get it all um, done professionally because I know I can't re-machine the head and if there's anything more serious wrong than just you know um, some carbon or something on the valves I probably can't do it myself anyway so yeah that's the next plan of action for the engine so we're pretty much out of commission with the engine for now well, the storm wasn't that bad after all. It was pretty mellow actually. We had some really strong winds, but we were super protected by the islands, so no huge waves, which is super good. And right now I'm just enjoying a lovely sunset. How's it going? Good, yeah, that was an intense uh, pulling up anchor. But Corey, you might want to get ready, we've got attacked because... Uh... Yeah. yeah, I see. <laughs> Dang shallow there. So we're just leaving Spanish walls behind when it's more than 15-20 knots of wind. It's just really hard to pull anchor by hand because we tried using the sails, we tried using a chain break and it wasn't working that well. We eventually managed to pull it up, but... Um, We'll have to figure out what works best for us and we'll make sure to let you know. Maybe we should have went over to Meek's Patch. <laughs> Maybe we should have. The wind was really strong from the north but then it switched to the east overnight. And I mean it was really really comfortable night of sleep. But then for pulling anchor it was really hard so maybe we should have came here yesterday night and it would have been really easy to just pull anchor from here protected the more you know these boats are smart so we're just heading over to current cut which is an hour and a half two hour sail from where we were and we're going there because that's the section where you can cross Eleuthera and go to the other side and explore some more and that cut is actually has a lot of current <laughs> as it's called so we're gonna have to time ourselves and cross it just a little after high tide and since we don't have an engine we also need the wind to be in the right direction for us so should be good to cross it tomorrow or the next day I'm trying to readjust our snubber because we bought this um, like rubber piece that's supposed to help with the shock load but we've got it so far back on our snubber that we're never really using it because then the hook for the chain just drags on the ground so right now I'm gonna put it more forward so that we've got about 10 feet of snubber because we usually use like 10 to 15 feet really unless it's really stormy yeah yeah and here's our anchorage. We got a few other boats, I'm assuming, waiting for the crossing across the current cut. And a nice little beach over here. Excited to go to shore! We're gonna go over to the beach over there and check it out. It looks like a cave that we can swim underneath. Explore the town just nearby. And uh, he's also a diesel mechanic, so he might come over later and check out our engine. That's a lot of current. And you can see the change of color from like the deep water to the shallow water. Pretty big problems with our engine. Quite a big rebuild. Or like you said, maybe just buy a new engine. Are you adapting one? 
Uh, we'll take all of them. Woohoo! We're making pizza. It's a little bit of yeast. Salt. Oil. Water. 